colleague, uh, Mr. Carter from Georgia. Five minutes. Please. Thank you, Madam Chair, and, and thank everyone for being on this call. This is um, this is certainly important. I want to start with you, Ms. Goodman. Um, there are those who have um, been somewhat critical, if you will, of the rare pediatric disease priority review voucher and have said that it hasn't been successful in, in achieving what it was intended to. You cited some figures, um, I believe, when, when Congressman Mullins was, was asking you some questions. Could you repeat those and the number of drugs that have come out as a result of the um, PRV and, and, and what, how you would respond to those claims, those critics who say that it hasn't um, operated like it should have? Sure. You know, there have been 22 new drugs approved by the FDA. That's a very high bar approval since the program was enacted. 2012. Um, I think that's pretty good proof that the program has been successful. How was it before the program? <laughs> Can you compare it before and after? Sure. Well, in the case of pediatric cancer, which is not all rare diseases, of course, there had only been two drugs approved expressly for kids with cancer in the 25 years leading up to the Green Book Act. Um, okay. So we couldn't get funded. Good, but the, the, obviously the program has helped. Obviously, we've seen results. The program has helped with small biotechs, with academics who want to get their ideas out into industry. It's just really been a very successful program. Well, let's, staying on that, on the program itself, and, and the the vouchers that are that, that get the priority review by the FDA, and allowing them to be completed in six months. Um, do you have any evidence that any of the drugs approved with a voucher under this program have, have had to be pulled from the market because it was unsafe? Um, have you seen any instances, instances of that at all, at all? So that's a terrific question, Congressman Carter. I'm going to have to get back to you on specifics. Um, but I will say that, you know, because of the voucher program, because of, uh, because of the user fees charged for this program and for PDUFA, FDA has been able to almost double um, the number of employees working at the FDA and reviewing drug approvals from 2008 until now. So we really have so many more people, so much more FDA technology and better management practices reviewing these drugs. I really trust the FDA not to be um, do a quick and dirty job. I really trust them to only approve drugs that are safe. Well, you know, I'm one who believes, and listen, I, as was mentioned earlier, as a practicing pharmacist for over 30 years, I, I've seen this, and I've dispensed some of these medications, and I, I can tell you that they are needed, and we need to in, need to improve the, the process by which they are approved, and, and, and certainly, you know, we, we still need to be careful. There's no question about that, but I'm still one who believes that, you know, no longer how long the no no matter how long the process is, it's you still run that risk. There will be some that, and I've seen it over my years of practice of drugs that have gone through a thorough review. That, regardless of how good a review it was, we had to pull them from the market at some at some point, and that's going to happen. But to keep them from getting on the market, I think is is a is far worse than than what we've experienced. Um, Dr. Kesselham, are, are you still with us? Yes. I am. I'm happy do, to answer you, Yeah. It, it, do you, um, have you seen any instances where any drugs have been, have had to be pulled back as a result of this um, accelerated uh, approval program? Yes. There was a study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine about a decade ago that said that drugs that are approved within uh, a short period of time just before the FDA approval deadline were, in, were more likely to be pulled from the market, were more likely to have box warnings added to it or other safety-related information added to it. And I think that study shows that if you impose arbitrarily fast deadlines on, on reviews, that that can increase the risk of those kinds of things happening again. I agree it doesn't happen very often, and we want to try to, but we want to try to minimize it happening as much as possible. The FDA doesn't approve drugs when the FDA approves the drugs, it doesn't mean the drug is safe. It just means that the drug's benefits outweigh its risks, and we have a lot more to learn about those risks once the drug hits the market. 
Now, I'm not going to dispute what you just said, but again, as a practicing pharmacist for over 30 years, I can tell you I've witnessed where no matter how long the review is, you're still going to have those instances. And I do think that the risk does outweigh or, or the benefits do outweigh the risk in this particular case. That's why I do hope that the program is permanently uh, renewed and, and, and that we can move on from there. And Madam Chair, I see I'm out of time, and I will yield back. Thank you both. Thank you all. Uh, the gentleman yields back. Thank you.